We've all heard the old adage, money can't buy happiness. But what can buy happiness, and what is happiness? Happiness means many things to many people. It could be an emotion, a feeling, even a way of life. We're here today with Miss St. John's 1A AP language class, and we're discussing happiness. Let's talk about it. Okay, my name is Dan Torres, and we're going to start off with our first question. Are we, as Americans, addicted to happiness? Americans, as a culture, we're very addicted to our immediate satisfaction. I mean, a lot of what caused the current economic crisis we're th uh, looking at right now is that people overburden themselves. They live beyond their means w in an attempt to be happy, in an attempt to follow through on the social norms they saw on television of keeping up with their neighbors. We've attached our happiness to materialism. And that materialism has gotten us into the crisis in part that we're in now. So I feel that we are addicted to a happiness, but a very specialized version of it. A happiness attached to what we can buy, that we're made up of what other people can see of us. And I think that sort of happiness is very unhealthy. Um, I mean, I'm sure there are more optimistic outlooks on this, but um, I feel that Americans, at least until now, have attached much of their happiness up on up upon um, our capitalistic values, but you can't exactly blame them since that's the way we were, brought in the society we were brought up in. Another thing is that as Americans, we kind of have the idea that we have to be happy all the time, and that kind of f is fueled by the media and advertisements and things telling us that we aren't happy enough, but why do we need to be happy all the time? Because isn't happiness supposed to be balanced by sadness and, um, I don't know, having a bad day? makes happiness all better. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I think that I like to be happy all the time, so I try to be, but I also think that a lot um, our society and our capitalistic values of what, what we're talking about and materialism leads to a lot of sadness, if not more than happiness. Um, I also think that maybe we're addicted a little bit to sadness. Like, people will kind of it, it's not only happiness, but people find enough sa as much satisfaction out of being sad sometimes. Um, where I'm depressed, pity me, come talk to me, I'm sad, let me cry, my, cry a lot around you. And I think that there's a lot of people that are actually addicted to being sad in addition to wanting to be happy, but that desire to be happy is also accepting of the fact that you'll be sad all the time. So it's kind of a double type of um, event that goes on in our society, I believe. Um, just, just looking at these, uh, just listening to these comments, one question that I have is, is happiness an illusion? Does anybody feel that happiness is an illusion? Sam, go for it. Happiness is not an illusion. I mean, it's documented scientifically that what happens in your, that very real things happen in your body, uh, hormones, endorphins get released, and you feel some sort of happiness or elation. Um, I think that that's that's co what we're constantly after that sort of feeling of like like uh, a high sort of like when people take drugs when people sort of brings this into the self medication thing people are constantly looking <coughs> for that that release of endorphins um, which motivates most of our actions <laughs> we we uh, have a release of endorphins when we eat when we exercise when we um, also when we help people you know this uh, the the helpers high that people get so. So I think that happiness is very real, not at all an illusion. Um, you did briefly touch on self-medication, which do you think that helps or hurts someone's happiness? I think that it helps in the very short term and not the long term, because I think that when you're self-medicating like that, you can't learn to be happy without, without some sort of, I, I don't know, a drug or when people eat too much uh, to be happy or et cetera, et cetera. I think that in order to grow, you need to learn how to be happy without that sort of thing. So I don't think that it helps happiness in the long run. So what is happiness in a social construct and how can it be construed? I feel like um, we're just trying to cover things up by just buying and, and engaging in this like consumer activity. But if we have certain goods or certain 
things that remind us of something special like it doesn't necessarily have to have monetary value i think that's the, like the most important thing so why do you guys think people discuss happiness so much um i think people discuss happiness because it's kind of a human thing to analyze something in order to understand it and we all want to feel happiness so maybe we think that by discussing happiness we'll learn how to feel it um i think discussing happiness goes a lot into society like today like when you watch tv oftentimes i see like cymbalta and like all these depression commercials and then i actually think about like am i happy or am i depressed like because when you watch these commercials and everything it's like almost i don't know brainwashing or something i'm confused well i mean i know i'm i mean i know i don't like take cymbalta or anything but <laughs> but i mean I feel like in today's world, it's like you should be depressed. Like you can't get to sleep. Your mind's running, and of course, people think about it and talk about it. Do you think people in our generation are happier? I mean, you just discussed a lot of advertising that's fairly new. Do you think we're a um, happier generation? As the more I read about how our generation is, like more competitive and fu fo focused on our future and everything, I think our generation is really. I think we're not very happy, yeah. Um, I think we're very stressed also. And I know a lot of people that think they're happy based on like fake I concepts of happiness, like materialism and stuff. And I'm like, you're not happy. <laughs> you're stressed. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think we're stressed out. I mean, obviously, we're ha there's happy. I mean, I think we know how to be happy and stuff, but I think we're just stressed and like, really really focused on our futures and stuff like and also ben kind of touched on it but oftentimes the more you have the less likely you are to be happy because there's so much playing into your life and right now the way that society is the way that we were brought up we're in a world where everything's happening at a million miles an hour and we have this going on and this going on and this and this and this and everything's happening at the same time and so it's oftentimes hard to control it and that's what causes our stress but you hear stories about people that are in the worst of situations, living the simplest of lives, that don't have all those added distractions and what's going on, everything happening at one time, and they are the most satisfied with their lives. They, I mean, I could just be hearing stories, I don't know, but I just feel that oftentimes, and especially in today's society, everything's happening so fast that it's hard to take time and take in the simple things that you have the fact that you are in a part of the world where you don't have to necessarily worry about starving every day, that should cause happiness. But since it's not, it, since it's a given, that oftentimes it's overlooked and it's harder to find happiness and find simplicity. Well, like Alana and Ben were talking a lot about being stressed and like how we have such a fast paced society. It's also because we're such a quick fix society. And I think people lose sight of what happiness truly is. Like, you know, he was talking about Cymbalta. Like, if you're depressed, take a pill. If you want to lose weight, take a pill. Like, all, all of these just quick fix things. And people expect, like, oh, if I do this, then I'll be happy. And if it doesn't work out right away, then, you know, like, what's wrong with me? There has to be something wrong if this isn't working. And I think that's part of the problem that we as a society have trouble, like, finding happiness. Uh, so <clears throat> a lot of people brought up socioeconomic factors with happiness. Um, and how consumer culture really lends itself to unhappiness or happiness depending on the person. So why, what, what is it in our culture that makes happiness such a black and white thing? How come there is no differentiation? How come it has to be uh, either buying things or not buying things and as a result not being happy or being happy? I think that this intuitive need to, this need to buy things is a natural result of a system in which that is based upon buying things. If you don't buy things, the system grinds, grinds to a halt and um, in, a in a sense of self-preservation, we can't do that as a society. We can't suddenly say, all right, I'm not going to buy things because that would stop society. Um, and while I do think it is a little bit, I mean, I was looking at some studies where it said that people who are richer are not necessarily any happier. So I don't think it necessarily comes from I don't know, owning something that's incredibly expensive, maybe just the buying in itself um, that almost gives like a false high. So 
I don't know if lots of money necessarily brings happiness. I mean, I'm looking at a study here that where, I mean, people who have more money are a little bit happier, but it's not a significant jump from, say, $50,000 a year to $100,000 a year. And I just find that really interesting. Well, I, I'm just not exactly sure where you're going with the whole, yeah, um, we need to keep buying things in order to keep this society, this capitalistic system afloat, which we can see because, now you mentioned earlier that, that um, what, what did you mention earlier? You mentioned earlier that uh, this current economic crisis was caused by people overspending and buying too much. And yet we hear a lot of people on the radio telling us that we should be buying more. And there's you know now sales because we have to keep buying more. Um, we can't stop. That's what's causing us to grind to a halt is that <coughs> as we realize suddenly that we can't afford what we had been buying, we are buying less. And that is causing an economic slowdown. So it seems to me to be sort of like, eh. Like, we, we have to keep being extraordinarily materialistic um, in order to keep this capitalistic nation afloat. Then maybe there's something wrong with capitalism. That we keep saying, oh, yeah, well, um, you know, money can't buy happiness. Uh, materialism is, is, is masking a lot of unhappiness. And I think that that's completely to be expected because the whole nature of advertising, which we see on a 24-hour uh, basis practically, um, is to tell us that we are not happy with what we have, that we would be happier with something else. And so therefore we feel a sense of loss, a sense of, well, I don't have what I could have. And then, then therefore we go out and we buy these things in order to, to fill up that, that hole that advertising um, tells us we have. Um, I think that that's, that's a huge problem. I think that um, we can't ever be happy in this. I mean, I think that individuals can be happy in this system, but I think that we need to relook at, relook the system and sort of think, well, if we're not happy with this situation, then how might we make it better? That's sort of what I'm, what I'm wondering about what you were saying. <laughs> Um, like you were talking before, like why is happiness so black and white in our society? And I think the problem is just the opposite, is that it's not so black and white and that people are constantly wondering if they're happy or not. Like Sam said before, you know, you may think you're happy and then you constantly have these advertisements and people telling you, no, you're not happy, like you could be, you could be happier. And I think that's the problem is people will think they're happy and then we'll see something, you know, in an ad or and wonder, wait, am I really happy? And also having material like material possessions to mask unhappiness. Like someone could get like a Lexus and think oh, I'm the happiest person in the world and then wonder like, you know, if they are having problems with their family or other things, like they're not truly happy. So I think it's more of the problem that it isn't so black and white in such a gray area. Great. Really good tr really good comments. I, I appreciated all of them. Um, but I'm going to pose this question again, and after hearing the comments that were just said, is happiness an illusion? Really think about that, and, and think about it in, in the sense of what everybody just said, and see if your, your personal perception of it changes. So is happiness an illusion? I don't think it's an illusion. I think that there's different definitions of happiness. There's the American way, there's the definition that oh well if I move to America I can get whatever I want and the desperation almost for more and to be skinny to have um, you know whatever the self-help books tell you to have a good marriage and all these people that are just like advertising like false truths and you know, so there's that happiness, which I don't know if that's really what it could be, but then there's the baseline, like Sam was saying, the endorphins and that are released when you go outside or, you know, enjoy a sunset or something a little bit more natural than, say, you know, things that are going on when you buy something. Um. I think happiness is an illusion because w I think we as Americans, like, if we keep buying stuff, I don't think, like, we're ever really truly happy. Like, I always think that we always strive to have more and more and more. 
Um, just hearing everybody's commentary, I'm just wondering about what are how are we defining happiness? Because some people might define it as an overall fulfillment in life, some where you don't you're happy with what you have, kind of happiness. But then there's also the happiness where I don't feel bad any part of the time. So I don't know what we're really going for right now. Like, because one of those could be considered an illusion, and one of those might be more scientific so because we keep bringing up the materialistic I want more I want more but that doesn't necessarily mean that we aren't happy it it might it might just mean that we aren't entirely satisfied (laughs) somebody had brought up something before about like how competitive that we are and I think it's kind of become happiness is fixated around competition like everybody is viewing their neighbors and seeing you know they're so happy what do I need to do to be that happy oh well they have this this and that why don't I have that do I need that to become happy and I just know like because of how um, I struggled like everybody makes certain decisions on what makes them happy based off how they struggled you know because when you struggle you learn to appreciate the things that you know you gain in the end and that really made you smile and I think that regardless of what I amount to I if I make decisions that allow me to come home to a family that will appreciate me for the values and morals that I have and will love me unconditionally that will make me happy and I don't it like I would rather be poor and have a family that is like always overwhelming me with love as opposed to just say well I drive in a car that costs more than your house so I must be happier than you I just see that as foolishness and definitely people that are in fact disguising things that they must have lacked when they were younger and didn't decide to do something about it and know how to change it for the true betterment of their lives I think a lot of you have said that being Americans has kind of warped our view of happiness possibly or that's kind of what I've gotten from a lot of this do uh, any of you think that people are happier in other countries Recently, um, I don't remember what polling group it was, came out with a study of which countries in the world are the happiness and I th- happiest. And I think uh, Denmark came out on top. And there was a uh, – was it – I'm sorry. Norway. Norway, I'm sorry. Um, and the U.S. actually I do not think was that high in the rankings. Um, and it's so fascinating because we – uh, I don't know. I think that living in other countries produces different conditions which – um, may make people happier, but I think that ultimately it comes down to what you make of where you live and what you do. I mean, I've always been told you have what you have, make the best of it, and I think that it's not so – maybe it's partly where you are, but it's really what you make of yourself, your situation, and uh, your future that determines how happy you will be. Are New Paltz High School students happy? Um, I think I think here at New Paltz we have something – pretty rare we have a very tight community where all these there there isn't like a a big distinction between groups I feel like we all get along um for the most part we're we're happy I believe and I think that's pretty rare um you know you hear stories in the news about you know teens struggling and I feel like for the most part we're doing we're doing the best we can and we're we're really um, making making the best of what we have, and I think we're happy for the most part. Guys did great. <laughs> Thank you very much, the class and Miss St. John. Thank you a lot. Round of applause. Come on. All right, well, I'm Dan Torres. And I'm Mike Saracero, and this has been Talk About It. Mm-hmm.